When building a WRO soccer robot, there's a lot of constraints that you have to meet. Today, I'm going to be outlining all of those constraints for your convenience, and I'm going to be offering some tips and advice for meeting those constraints. The first constraint, as you all know, is that your WRO soccer robot must fit within a cylinder that's 22 centimeters in diameter and 22 centimeters in height. Now, I've, if you've seen my how to build a WRO regular robot, you'll know this tip. What I suggest that you do is take a large enough piece of paper and a compass and actually draw out a circle that's 22 centimeters in diameter. And when you build your robot, build your robot over this piece of paper so you have an active visual of how big that your robot needs to become. And keep in mind that your robot has to always be within the cylinder and, and um, the judges measure it when it's at its largest size. It can never expand beyond this 22 centimeter footprint. It also needs to never exceed 22 centimeters in height. And um, if you have the materials and the means, I would recommend you actually building a cylinder, which is even better than just drawing out the circle. The idea behind drawing or building your size constraint is that it's a lot easier to build a robot to a size constraint when you can visually see it and actively measure it whenever you need to. So you can see immediately if you make a change to the robot, you can immediately see if it's going to violate that size constraint. Now, the second constraint goes hand in hand with the first. And what I mean by that is that you have to watch out for number one when looking for number two. And number two is that your high technic compass sensor, if you're using it, must be placed um, at least 10 centimeters away from any motors or the EV3 NXT brick if you can. If you can't, that's okay. Just try to keep it as far away as possible because all of these generate magnetic fields that can interfere with the compass sensor. And I'm going to have another tutorial about how to use the compass sensor in the intervening weeks unless I already publish it. Constraint number three is that your WRO soccer robot must have some sort of handle on top where your referee can easily reach and grab and pick up your robot. And this is the one exception to the first rule and because the handle is not actually included in your robot's total height. Also, if you're in the novice league, they do allow you to use non-LEGO parts as your handle, such as these wire ties, which are fun. And actually, in the Gen 2 rulebook, they even recommend that you use wire ties because they're very lightweight and strong and not necessarily intrusive to your robot design. Constraint number four is that omnidirectional wheels are not permitted. Now, this very obviously excludes things like omni wheels and rotocaster wheels shown in this picture here. However, the LEGO ball caster pictured here is legal, or you could opt to manually build your own caster wheels. These are traditional wheels that are on a pivot so they can swivel around on an axis. However, it's not completely clear if it's legal for you to make your own omni wheels manually, like in this picture. So if I were you, I would just refrain from using them. Number five isn't necessarily a constraint that's written in the rules. It's more of a thing that's really important to look out for. Now, if you watch some of my other videos, you've probably heard this already, and I probably sound like a broken record now, but make sure that you neatly coil all of the wires within the footprint of your soccer robot. And I say this because it's extremely important with a soccer robot, because unlike FLL and WRL regular, when you're doing soccer, you have other robots on the field, and that's just entanglement factor times 8,000 or whatever. So it's just extremely important to keep all of your, ro your robot's wires coiled up within the footprint of the robot, like I'm showing in this picture. I've also made a video about how to avoid mistakes when wiring your robot, and I cite FLL robots in this video a lot, but this, um, some of the information is also relevant to WRO, so if you want to check that out, you can too. Number six is as per the Gen 2 2015 football rules, WRO recommends that you build your robots to cope with 5mm imperfections in the table because, you know, maybe they build it out of plywood and the plywood's warped or the two pieces aren't exactly completely flush or something like that. And it just, it's a really easy thing to solve. Just make sure your robot has a, a little bit of ground clearance between the floor itself, or actually rather the table, and where the bottom of the robot is. And so you have enough ground clearance where the robot's not gonna just crash into something like that. And also because there's a slight incline at the edges of the mat in the white area. So this last one is again not really a constraint, it's just a hint. 
Now, when you're watching regular soccer with real humans playing, of course you're going to have an advantage if um, the human player can run faster than other humans on the other team. And what you might want to consider is maybe making your robot a little faster. You don't necessarily have to because if your robot's slower, then you can control your actions a little better. But if you want to make a faster robot that can outrun the other robots to get to the ball, um, what I would recommend then is to use tall wheels like I have on this robot here. I use this these like ridiculously tall motorcycle wheels and they're the tallest wheels Lego makes. You don't necessarily have to go this tall, but I'm, I'm just saying if you want to go faster, tall wheels are the best option. So the one downside though is it does decrease your torque, which is the moving force of your robot, but you're not really supposed to be forcing other robots out of the way anyway. That's against the rules. As always, big thanks for watching my video this week. If there are any solutions to constraints that I missed in this video, be sure to add them in the comments section below, and I'd really appreciate it if you did that. And I'd also really appreciate if you subscribed for more EV3 tutorials like this every week. So, thank you, and I'll see you next week. Bye.